In this lesson, we'll be building upon what we learned in the previous lesson. I'll be showing you how you can analyze pictures and references in order to determine the type of light source and the direction of the light source. The reason for this is that you'll gain an understanding of how lighting works a little bit, and then you can start applying this into your own drawings too. I'll be starting off with an in-depth demonstration of how light falls on these objects. I'll be playing around with the direction, the intensity, and the light source to give you an understanding of how these different factors affect the highlights and the shadows on the shapes. And then this will be followed by an exercise which you'll complete which will be based on the information that you learn in the demonstration section. Okay, so for the demonstration, what I'll we'll be doing is using the shapes that we created in the perspective section, and I'm going to be shining a light on there myself whilst recording it, whilst changing the parameters like the direction, the intensity, and the light source to show you how this affects the highlights and the shadows. And then what we'll be doing is we'll be using that as a reference for the exercise later on in this lesson. The two different light sources that I'll be using will be a direct and a soft diffuse light. The direct one is a lot more harsh, whereas a soft diffuse one spills a lot more, which will give the highlights and the shadows a softer look. And with regards to the direction of the light, I'll be doing top, straight ahead, right, and then left. Okay, let's just get straight into the demonstration, and let me show you how the light affects the highlights and the shadows. Okay, so what we're doing now is I'm just going to be flashing up a bunch of shapes on the screen, and I'll be moving the light. So as you can see here, I'm going to be going from soft light to harsh light, showing you how it transitions. What we're looking for here is how quickly it goes from the highlights to the shadows. By this, you can tell how intense or how soft the light is. So what I'm doing is I'm shining it from the left, the right, the front, and then the top. So as you've seen the hair, this is what the this is what happens to the cone. It's good to keep this in mind, especially when you're drawing things in the future, because when you are trying to recreate a scene and pick a light source, these are the type of images that will be useful. It's important to see, like say here, for example, with the cube, it's important to see how the shadows are falling on the shape, but not just the shape, but also the surface. It's good to study to see how the values affect each face. As you can see, the face that's closest to the light is always the lightest, and then they say the one that's opposite or furthest away from the light source is always going to be the darkest in value, especially when it comes to cubes. So a sphere, a sphere is a very interesting one. As you can see, the way that the light curves around the ball and creates quite a nice smooth but also curved shadow. Understanding how the light falls on these shapes is really important so do spend some time to go through them. Uh, if you do want to try imitate these by creating value from these uh, on shapes of your own then please do feel free to do so. Okay finally for cylinders now. So as you can see the light's coming in from the left hand side so the top surface is quite light and also the left hand side and then it gradually fades to the right whereas if we see the harsh light it's a lot more abrupt and you can see as well the shadows that are casting on the floor they're a lot more sharp compared to the soft light where it's a lot more blurred here's an example from the front as you can see the shadows spilling slightly on the floor on the e either side of the shape And here is the final one from the top. And what I've done now is I've just put all the shapes on the screen and I was moving the light source so just so you can see how the light is affecting the shape but also the shadow that's formed on the surface. This video is good to keep as reference because what you can do is you can pause at any time and then use these in further drawings. Okay, so based on this demonstration, there's three things which you can take away, which have correlations. So when you are looking at future images or you are trying to create your own drawings of your own, it's good to keep these in mind. Okay, so firstly, shadows are always on the opposite side of the highlights, considering that the highlights are the same side as the light source. So this is good to know when you are creating 3D objects or you're creating other types of drawings, when you are trying to add highlights and shadows, just to keep that in mind. Secondly, we have how quickly the values change. So intense light sources generally go from highlights to shadows a lot more quickly and a lot more abruptly compared to say a softer light which will have a gradual fade from the highlights to the shadows. And thirdly, soft light sources generally have a lower contrast in the overall object or drawing. Below in the resources, I've created a cheat sheet based on all the demonstrations that we did in this lesson, showing all the different light sources and the directions and how that affects the highlights and the shadows. It's good to keep this on hand, especially when you're drawing, so you can refer back to this to see how the highlights and the shadows are falling on an object. Okay, so that's the end of this lesson. We covered quite a bit, but if you do find it a little bit hard or the concepts in this a little bit complex, do you feel free to go back and take certain parts of this lesson again, just to give yourself a better understanding of how all this works. 
Just as a quick recap, we went through how the different light sources, the intensity and the direction all affect the highlights of the shadows of the different objects. This is the important part to get your head around as this is what's going to make your drawings and your illustrations pop and look real. In the next lesson, we're going to be building on what we just learned by adding a cast shadow, incorporating the light source and the shadows and highlights that we added to our objects. I'll see you there.